I can generally use Git comfortably to do what I need for my day-to-day -day work, which usually looks something like this. So in the past, I've done my best to avoid getting into funky states, but I can also do a bit of stashing, popping, cherry picking, and interactive rebasing if I need to. But Git still felt like a malevolent, powerful genie who was ready to take my commands literally and mess up my whole day. So I'm going to show you a tool that changed that for me and made Git feel like it was giving me superpowers to enhance my workflow rather than being something I had to be cautious with. So by the end of this video, you will know how to incorporate these superpowers into your own workflow as well. So the tool is a terminal UI for Git commands called lazy Git. So once installed, you can just run lazy Git from within a Git repo on your machine. Uh, for extra style points, you can just create an alias so you can run something like LG instead to launch it. So this video isn't going to be a deep dive into using lazy Git generally because there is a lot that it can do. So rather than giving you a feature list, I'm going to focus mainly on the new things that are enabled in my workflow that make me feel like one of the cool kids. But a very quick introduction is still required so you know how the heck this thing actually works. So as you can see, we have some windows displayed in the terminal and you can jump between these windows using the arrow keys, uh, vim bindings, or by hitting the number that corresponds to a particular window. And both arrow keys and vim bindings also work for navigating within individual windows as well. So in this files window here, I can easily stage files by hitting the A key to stage all of the files that have changes. Or I can stage just some files by selecting them individually and pushing the spacebar. So I can stage some files, create a new commit by hitting C and typing a message. And then I can create a separate commit for this file as well if I want to by doing the same thing, selecting it, hitting C and writing another commit message. So in this next window, I can easily see and switch between branches and you can also easily push and pull from here as well. So if I want to check out this LG hunks branch, I can just hit space on it and that's going to check it out for me. And then let's say I want to merge main into this branch. Well, if I want to do that, I can just highlight the main branch, hit shift M and then I'll be able to merge the main branch into the currently checked out branch. And then in the commits window, I can easily browse through commits and see the diffs on the right hand side of the screen. I can also easily check out commits here, reword them or even reset to specific commits. So if we take a look at uh, this commit, for example, I can see that I have a typo in that commit message. So that's fine. I can just hit R and that's going to give me the ability to uh, reword this commit. So I can just fix that typo. Now let's say that I don't even want these commits at all. Maybe this is like some demo dummy commit for a YouTube video and I don't want this actually committed. So what I can do is I can just go back to the commit I want to reset to. I'm going to hit G and that's going to give me my reset options. I'm going to choose a soft reset. So now I still have all of my changes staged but they are no longer committed. Uh, you could also do a mixed reset to uncommit and unstage them or a hard reset to uncommit unstage and delete all the changes as well. So there's a lot more basic stuff you can do here that I won't be covering. Uh, I would recommend just hitting the X button to launch the menu and you can just browse through all of the different commands available. Okay, now let's get to superpower number one. So one thing that I did my absolute best to avoid was mixing up work so that I didn't end up in a situation where I needed two separate commits, but the changes were mixed together in single files. So let's use an example where we have added two new NPM packages to the project, some package one and some package two. So I don't want a single commit that says uh, added X and Y to the project. I want two separate commits, but we're a bit screwed here because if I stage this file, it's going to contain both changes. So instead of hitting space to stage this file, we can hit enter. And this will allow us to stage individual hunks from within the file. So we can find our line, stage it by hitting space. You can also select ranges of lines with V. Then we can exit out with the escape key, create a commit by hitting C. We'll just write chore uh, added package one. And now if we go and take a look at that commit, we can see that it just has that one package contained in that commit. And we still have the rest of those changes unstaged. And so now I can just add the rest of this file, uh, create another commit, I'll say chore, added package two. 
And now we have two separate commits that both contain just the one package change. Okay, so superpower number two is easily squashing commits without having to do an interactive rebase. So often when we are working, we don't want to create nicely formatted commit messages. We might create five or 20 commits with a bunch of junk messages. But in the end, when we are pushing it, we will want those 20 commits combined into a single commit or maybe a couple of different commits with a nice message instead of something like, please work. So if I want to group these four commits into one commit, I can just go to my top commit here and hit S. That will squash it into the commit beneath it. And I can just keep doing that until all of the commits are combined into one commit. And then we can hit R to reword this single commit into something a little bit better. So I might call this uh, feature added something cool. And if you want a bit more power, you can also do an interactive rebase using the lazy git UI as well. Okay, so now superpower number three is pushing your nice work whilst keeping your scrappy work locally. So I often get into situations where I am scrappily working on one thing. So maybe I'm being a bit sloppy with my commits because I'm going to squash them later with a nice commit message. But then I switch to working on something else for some reason. Uh, maybe I install some package and then get back to my scrappy work. So I might end up in a situation like this before I even realize it. I have my scrappy commits, then a nice one, and then another scrappy commit. Now I could just leave all of this as is and then fix it up with some squashing or an interactive rebase later. But let's say I want to push this nice commit up to the remote repo right now, but I don't want my scrappy commits to be pushed as well. So what I can do is use lazy git to reorder the commits. So I can select the commit that I want to push and move it down by hitting control J. And I can keep doing this until it is beneath all of my scrappy commits. And now what I want to do is just push everything up to this commit. So basically I want the commit that I just moved down to sort of be the latest commit on origin. So I can use lazy git to copy the hash of the commit that I want to push up to by hitting control O. And then outside of lazy git, I can run the command git push origin. We'll paste the hash that we just copied and then also supply the branch that we are pushing up to on the origin, which might be main. Technically I'm on the LG push branch right now, so I should probably be pushing to that instead. But when we run this command, it's going to push uh, all of our nice commits up to that commit that we just moved down, but it's going to leave all of the scrappy commits that we didn't want pushed, that is going to remain local and just the nice one is going to be pushed to the remote repo. So adding these to my workflow, which I wouldn't have been able to do as quickly or confidently without lazy git has given me much more freedom in my coding. I feel like I can more naturally just code in more of a flow state now. I can easily switch between tasks and have the confidence that I'll still be able to tidy everything up into nice commits. So if you found any of these tips helpful, a like or subscribe before you go would be much appreciated. And I hope to catch you again for the next video.